Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to examine piecewise functions and we'll go through a few examples dealing with piecewise functions. So before we deal with these, we need to understand what a piecewise function is. So a piecewise function, these are functions that are essentially defined by different formulae over different regions in their domain. Basically meaning that when you have different ranges for x, you're going to have different formulae for your function. So let's take a look at an example. What I have here is an example of a piecewise function. And the best way to see this is to actually draw this. So we'll draw it now. What we have is f of x is equal to, we'll open a curly bracket to indicate the different parts of this piecewise function. Now this piecewise function or this function f is equal to x whenever, so we'll have a semicolon here or a colon, whenever the x value or the x input values are greater than or equal to zero. So whenever the x values that you are inserting are equal to zero or greater than zero, the output value of this function f will be x. However, when we have x less than zero, so that means you are inserting an x value such as minus one, minus a half, minus seven, minus 10, you are then going to follow the function x plus two. Now, the best way to see this is again to draw it. So let's try drawing this piecewise function. So we're going to have a Cartesian plane. And the best thing to do now is to identify where your domain breaks. So if you look at this piecewise function, we have a situation where x is greater than or equal to zero and a situation where x is less than zero. So we can see that the domain of x values is, for lack of a better word, breaking at zero. So what I would suggest you do is take a different color pencil and place or create a dashed line at x is equal to zero. So you can see I've created a dashed light blue line at x is equal to zero. That's going to represent where our piecewise function breaks, basically where it's changing from one function to another. Now let's plot it. So whenever the x value or the input value is greater than or equal to zero, we are going to plot this function x. So if we had to plot that, or let's think about the normal x function, y is equal to x is just a linear graph that looks like this. But we are now, for this piecewise function, only going to plot this blue line whenever it is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, whenever it is lying toward the right of that dashed light blue line we have. So essentially, we are just going to plot this portion of that linear function y is equal to x. So let's plot that. So what we'll have for the first part of the piecewise function, it will look like so, y is equal to x. And note that we have x is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that at zero, this function is defined. So we are going to put a closed dot and this point will be zero and zero. That's this point here, which is why we have closed dot. Okay, that's the first part of the piecewise function taken care of. Let's deal with the second part. So the second part is x plus two whenever x is less than zero. So let's think about the x plus two function. That is a straight line linear function. And if we had to plot that on a normal Cartesian plane, it would look like so. So it would cut, it would have a y-intercept of positive two and an x-intercept of negative two. Let's take a minute and check that you actually get those intercepts. So this is what the x plus two function would look like, but we have it in a piecewise function. We are only going to plot x plus two whenever x is less than zero, meaning that we must plot that blue line, this blue line here, whenever it is toward the left of the dashed blue line that I have. So essentially, we are going to plot this portion right here. So let's plot that. Okay, so it will have an intercept at positive two and it will look like so. So this point here will be zero and, sorry, it'll be negative two and zero, negative two and zero. And then I want you to take notice of this point here. We have X is less than zero. Notice here that we do not have an equality sign. So it's not X is less than and 
x is less than or equal to zero. It is just x is less than zero, meaning that at this point here where x is supposed to be zero, we are going to have an open dot, meaning we are not including that point. So we will have an open dot there, but I'm going to just label that point anyway so you know what that point is. It would be zero and two, but remember, it's an open dot. We aren't including that point on our function. So this is how you actually plot this piecewise function. And I want you to notice that this is one single function f. However, it has different pieces. So it has a piece of the x plus two graph and a piece of the x graph for different um, input values on your domain. Okay, so that's why it's called a piecewise function because it's made up of different pieces. All right, so that was an easy example. Let's move on to another one. So what I have here is the piecewise function g of x. Now, if you look at this one, it doesn't have two pieces, it has three pieces. But the way you sketch it is exactly the same. So let's sketch a Cartesian plane. Here's the Cartesian plane. And what we're going to do first is look at where the range of x values break. So here we have something where x is less than minus one. And in the second part of the function, we have a portion where x is greater than or equal to minus one. So immediately I see x is less than minus one and x is greater than or equal to minus one in the second piece. So I know that I'm going to have a break at minus one. So what we'll do is we'll plot a dashed line here which you can erase later. It's not essential to have the dash, that dashed line. It just makes plotting this function much easier. So we're going to have that dashed line at minus one. Let's just write that minus one there at the bottom. And if we look further in the range of x values, we have a situation where x is less than five, and then a situation where x is greater than or equal to five. So we have another break at x is equal to five. So what should we do? We should plot a light dashed line at x is equal to 5. Let's plot that down. There we go. Now we are ready to start sketching this function. So let's deal with the first piece. The first piece is x squared whenever x is less than minus 1. Now you can plot it directly if you can. You can just look toward the left of minus 1. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this entire x squared function and then we'll consider the portion that's toward the left of minus 1. So Let's plot the function x squared in pencil, in lightly in pencil. It should look something like this. Let's draw a parabola. There we go. Okay. But we are so only supposed to plot this y is equal to x squared function when x is less than minus one. In other words, when you are to, toward the left, okay, toward the left of that dashed blue, uh, that dashed blue light, light blue line. So we need to essentially plot only this portion here. So let's plot that. Okay, so it will look something like so. Let's draw it in white. There we go. Okay, and notice we have x is less than minus one. So it's not x is less than or equal to minus one. It's x is less than minus one, meaning we are not including the x value of minus one in this specific function y is equal to x squared. So what we are going to do is for now, we are just going to have an open dot. And you'll see why I say for now, we're going to take a look at the next portion. So we'll tentatively leave that as an open dot. And that portion will be minus one. That's the x value. And what would the y value be? Well, we can substitute minus one into x squared. Minus one squared is positive one. So minus one and positive one is that open dot for now. Let's take a look at the next function. We have x plus two, y is equal to x plus two, when our x value is between minus one and five. So let's use the same steps that we followed. Let's plot the original function. That would be x plus two. We did that in the previous example. x plus two would look something like so. Okay, so it will have an intercept at positive two, and an x, so an y intercept at positive two and an x intercept at negative two. Okay, just check that you do in fact know to plot x plus two. However, we are only going to plot this function when 
x is between minus 1 and positive 5. So in this region here, okay, between minus 1 and positive 5. So let's plot that function out. Okay, so what it will look like is, it would look like so. Okay, let's just extend this x is equal to 5 line up here and extend the other one as well. And now I want you to take a look at something. We have x is greater than or equal to minus 1, meaning on this function here, we must have an open dot when we are dealing with x is equal to minus 1. So how you do that is you take negative 1 and substitute it into x plus 2. You'll have minus 1 plus 2 and you'll get positive 1 which, surprise, surprise, is this exact point here, which is why I told you for now we leave it as an open dot. But since this point here is now included in this graph here of x plus 2, we are now going to shade it in and it will become a closed dot. So that point is minus 1 and positive 1. Okay, so there's not going to be an open dot, dot there any longer. But then take a look at x is equal to 5. We have x is less than 5. We do not have x is less than or equal to positive 5, meaning that I should have an open dot here. We'll check if that becomes a closed dot. Yes, now we'll see if that is in fact an open dot or a closed dot. But for now, we're going to leave it as an open dot because it's x is less than 5, not x is less than or equal to positive 5. Okay, so we're going to have an open dot there and just let's label that point. So you substitute 5 into this function of x plus 2. So you'll have 5 plus 2. So the x coordinate will be 5. And then 5 plus 2 is 7. And that's the coordinate for the open dot. Then we just have to deal with the last portion. Whenever x is greater than or equal to positive 5, we are going to plot the value of 4. Okay, So just think about that for a minute. g of x is equal to 4. Basically, that's a horizontal line where y is equal to 4. So if, if this is 1, that's 1. y is equal to 1. And that's y is equal to 7. y is equal to 4 should be somewhere around here. Okay, and it will go on. It's just a horizontal line going on until infinity. And we have x is greater than or equal to positive 5, meaning at this point here, now, we should substitute the value of 5 in this function here. And you'll notice that there's no x there, it's just a 4. So we will have a closed dot since it has equality in that interval. So we will have a closed dot here, and that will be 5 for the y value of 4. And that's how you would plot this piecewise function. So again, this piecewise function is just made up of different pieces. It's got a piece of a parabola, a piece of a linear function, and a piece of a horizontal line here over different values of x. It has three pieces in total. And that's how you handle this example. OK, let's go on to a special type of piecewise function that you may have encountered. And it's called the absolute value function. Some of you may know it denoted like this. So ADS, or absolute value of x. Another, another more common notation is a two vertical lines encapsulating this x. It means absolute value of x. OK, so the absolute value of x can be written as a piecewise function. So absolute value of x is equal to, open the curly bracket for the different parts of the function, x whenever x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to negative x whenever x is less than 0. Let's just take a minute to understand why this piecewise definition works and why the absolute value function is defined like this. So if you recall, one of the key features or one of the main things of the absolute value function is that if you take an x value, okay, I want you to think about an x value and you substitute it in into this absolute value function. The absolute value function is always going to return the positive version of that number. Unless, of course, the one technicality is zero, Zero is neither positive nor negative, but pick another number. Pick something besides zero. Okay, zero is neither positive or negative. We all know that. So pick another number, negative or positive. And you insert it into the absolute value function. It's always going to give you a positive number. 
Why is this the case? Well, we turn to the piecewise definition of the absolute value function. So if the number you chose, so let's look at the first portion. If the number you chose, let's say the number you chose was positive seven. Seven is an X value. It's an input value that is already greater than or equal to zero. Okay, seven is obviously greater than zero. So the seven is already a positive number. It's a positive number. So the absolute value is saying, well, if you are inserting or your input is a positive number, just give me that number as is. Don't make any changes. So if you put in seven into the absolute value, it's going to return a value of seven. Okay, so if you insert a positive number or you insert zero, that's why we have equality here. If you insert a positive number, or you insert zero, you are just going to get that positive number or the zero back without any changes. That's fine. The trick here applies in the second portion. If you chose a negative number, let's say you chose negative five, x is equal to negative five. Well, the absolute value is saying, okay, the x value is negative five, that is clearly less than zero. Don't use this first definition because it doesn't satisfy the inequality. Use the second definition of the, or the second part of the absolute value function because your input value of negative five is clearly less than zero. So we are going to return the value of negative x. Now, what you're going to return is negative x, but your x value that you chose is negative five. So once you multiply out the two negatives by each other, negative times a negative, that gives you a positive. So your output value or your y value is going to be positive five. So I'll go over that again. When your answer is, when your input value or your, or your x value is a negative number, for example, negative five or negative three, choose a negative number that you're comfortable with. You are going to return the negative of that negative number. Let's say we chose negative three this time. So the negative times by the negative is going to cancel out and it's going to yield a positive value of three. That is why this piecewise definition of the absolute value function works. When your input is positive or zero, just return that input as is. When your input is negative, your negative input has to have a negative in front of it. There's that negative in front of it. So that negative in front of it is now going to cancel off with the negative on your input, and it's going to give you a positive output value. That's how the piecewise function works, and that's why it works. All right, let's go on to some examples.